Um, we're really glad to be here. Thank you for extending a hand of in invitation to us. Uh, this is a, an important forum of stakeholders, and we very much welcome the opportunity to be here to be part of this discussion. Uh, my previous, the previous speakers have, I think, done my work or half of my work for me. Kwamina, thank you for that um, intervention. I think you lay out the issues quite nicely um, from all perspectives, uh, very much so, especially on the regulatory side. Vish, thank you for bringing in the global perspective, which is very relevant for us as we chart a path forward. Uh, for a more resilient financial system. On the part of Bank of Ghana, I just want to add that we take our mandate of ensuring a stable financial system in Ghana very important. It is so critical uh, to, the to the survival of the entire financial system, but not just that. It is critical for the survival of our economy, and it's critical for where we want to go as a nation in terms of our economic development. And given how seriously we take our role, we have taken a very critical rule, um, look at the current financial system and how we got here and how we may be able to move forward, uh, charting a stronger financial system that works for everyone. Let me just touch on something that um, Vish mentioned about interconnectedness in the financial system. I just want to break that down a little bit more. If you take Ghana's financial system, it's made up of the banking sector, it's made up of other deposit-taking institutions, it's made up of insurance, it's made up of um, securities, which is the capital market um, part of the financial system. You will find that 85% of, of the assets in the financial system are lodged really in the banking sector. The banking sector alone carries about 85% of the entire financial system. Uh, added to that is the issue of interconnectedness. Banks are interconnected with savings and loans and with insurance firms and with fund managers and with broker dealers. If you have a situation where you don't have a strong banking system, your entire financial system is at risk, and you do have systemic problems on your hands. When we look at examples of financial crisis in the past, whether you take the savings and loans crisis of the US, uh, whether you take the Asian financial crisis, whether you take the global financial crisis, it takes countries and regions sometimes 10 years to recover economically from a major crisis. So we've been blessed in Ghana. We didn't get hit by the global financial crisis as Europe did, um, as Nigeria did. In 2009, Nigeria had a major banking crisis on its hands, tied to the global financial crisis somehow. And they had to deal with about 10 distressed, severely distressed banks. Uh, they, they managed to deal with it and clean up the financial system. We were spared that, and it seems to me that we're having to learn some of the lessons that major economists learned at least 10 years ago about what not to do <laughs> when you're running a bank or what not to do uh, with your banking system. <coughs> Many of the issues that Kwamina mentioned, whether you're talking about poor risk management, poor corporate governance, um, poor lending models of the banks, uh, on the side of the borrowers about not being prudent in their credit behavior and all of that. All of these were part of what caused the global financial crisis, which started in one country, and before you knew it, had become a major economic problem in, in the United States, and had become a major problem in Europe and in emerging markets. Uh, we have learned the lessons although we were not hit by it, in our own recent past, we're beginning to learn some lessons, which are not very different from what, what other countries have learned over the years. The lessons are the same. If you take money from the public as a bank or as a financial institution, the public has confidence in you. 
because you have a license issued by a regulator. The public understands that there is a regulatory body that is making sure that their money that you hold is safe. It is incumbent on the regulator to ensure that there is a, a regulatory framework that when complied with, banks or other financial institutions are more likely than not to be safe and sound and to adopt behavior that is consistent with a resilient financial system and that promotes the confidence and trust of the public in the financial system. We as regulators, take this role seriously, as I said as, at the beginning. And in light of that, we have put in place a number of measures to ensure that we do have a stronger financial system going forward. And some of the lessons we have learned in our immediate past, which have caused the closure of two banks and the official administration of a third bank, would not recur going forward. As a result, we're hoping that banks increase their minimum capital by December uh, of this year. We're looking forward to banks beginning to implement the Basel two and three capital framework, which promotes a more resilient capital base for banks, which will protect them from risks um, out of the operations. Where we've just uh, issued our, fit, uh, our corporate governance directive, which would hopefully promote better uh, corporate governance standards in the sector. We're coming out with a fit and proper person requirement, which all bank shareholders, directors, and senior management would have to um, comply with before they have anything to do with the banking sector. We're coming out with bank holding company regulations so that parent companies or banks and affiliates of banks are all regulated in a way that ensures that their dealings with banks do not create problems for banks and the depositors whose monies are kept in the bank. And we have a list of other um, actions we're taking. And in due course, we'll be consulting with the public for feedback. But let me just say that with the objective of ensuring that the banks are safe and also that the deposits that they hold are safe, we're serious about implementing a deposit protection scheme. An act was passed in 2016 to establish a deposit protection scheme for Ghana. We have recently had the act amended so that its provisions uh, can better help to establish a, a first class deposit protection scheme. And we're hoping that in the next few months, running into the, to early next year, this deposit protection scheme will be up and running so that depositors would have more confidence in putting their monies with banks. But as Kwamina said, this is something that all stakeholders need to take seriously. It is in everybody's interest that the banking sector is strong and resilient. The regulator, Bank of Ghana, we are committed to doing our part. We expect the banks to do up their part. We expect shareholders and directors and management to do their part. And we expect you, the users of the banking system, to do your part by asking your banks the right questions and by supporting regulatory action, which ensures that deposits are safe and that the entire financial system is safe. Thank you very much.